All right, today I'm going to show you how to set up a Sonic Wall Sonic Point N dual radio uh, into your network uh, in the uh, standalone mode when you don't have a Sonic appliance to attach it to. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and uh, install the Sonic Point N radio to your network physically. If you're using a PoE switch um, or a PoE, PoE adapter um, with the Sonic Point, uh, dual radio, go ahead and connect it to your network physically. Um, once that's done and there's power being supplied to the access point via the uh, cat cable, um, you're all set. If not, then you may need to get a optional power adapter for the uh, Sonic uh, appliance or Sonic access point. Um, let's go ahead and begin. So what you want to do is once everything is set up on your desk, um, and the lights are going going on the access point, you want to go ahead and go to your system preferences on your Mac or your PC um, and where it's connected via Ethernet. Um, I would disable wireless um, at the moment and configure it using manually. Um, under the IP address, you want to put in um, 192.168.1.1. And then 255.255.255.0, and then the router, you just leave it blank and hit apply. Um, it'll say it's currently connected and active, it has the IP address of that. So once that's done, you can go ahead and close that window, and then you can open up uh, Google Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer, type in the default management um, interface IP address of 192.168.1.20. When you do that, um, it will ask you for your password. Let me do that again. I'll just log out real quick um, and then log back in. Um, it's going to ask you for your username and password. The username is lowercase admin, A-D-M-I-N. The password is password, all lowercase letters, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. And then once you log in, you're in. And that's the screen that was there before. In the beginning, you're going to see three alerts that appear under status. The network settings are factory default. This is pertaining to your network interface um, via the uh, LAN port on the access point because obviously it has to be connected to um, your network uh, to work properly. Um, this is the, again, the default IP address that we put in, the subnet mask that is being associated to, and the gateway. Um, later on, uh, once you do have everything set up properly on this access point in terms of your wireless uh, radio settings and all that stuff, um, wherever it's going, you want to make sure that your subnet mask, um, your gateway um, address is the same here as it is on any other um, device. Um, so let's say if your gateway is 192.168.1.1, then keep it the same. If your subnet mask is that, keep it the same. But this IP address, you want to make sure that it's not being used if you do use static IPs in your network for any reason, workstations, um, printers, anything like that, that you do have set static IPs for, um, you want to make sure that this IP address is not used uh, right now. Um, and you can do, uh, you know, um, uh, lookups uh, in Windows and Macs uh, to find out if that IP address is available or what you can do is if you're using uh, like a time capsule or any other uh, device you can uh, or a Linksys router um, as your gateway then you could um, set up a, a reservation for that IP address um, statically so you know for sure that it is uh, it, it's it is not going to be a conflict on your network so for now, I'm going to keep this the way it is, um, and then the next thing you want to do is just look over some of these settings. I mean, these are all the settings that are going to tell you exactly what's going on with the access point. Um, you can go ahead and read each one once you get into it um, under settings. These are like the system name, okay, um, country, uh, what you want it to be a wireless bridge, you want it to be a wireless router. Um, if you do that, it says warning before starting, please ref, you know, configure network interfaces in network DHCP server. So you want to make sure you have that all set before you go ahead and do that. Um, this is the admin and password. Uh, you can go ahead and change that if you want to, to whatever you want. Just make sure you keep records of it. 
somewhere, uh, not on the computer or on a piece of paper or on a sticky that's on your monitor somewhere. Um, firmware, um, the only way I think, I believe you can update the Sonic uh, NDR firmware is if you do have a service agreement with SonicWall. Um, that's the only way you can do it unless there's any other ways. Please let me know um, in the comments below. Diagnostics, again, there's pretty simple. You can run diagnostics left and right on this thing. And of course, you can restart the device for any reason if you needed to. Um, under network of the tab, again, it's the same thing. Interfaces under wireless. This is going to give you a status of your whole wireless access point, your five gigahertz radio, if it's on or if it's off, 2.4, um, the radio mode, all, all, the, all the basic information that you're going to need. Um, to know what's going on um, under what I did was I went to the five gigahertz radio settings um, I enabled it first it was like this so I enabled it uh, went to sonic wall um, SSID I named it sonic wall five gigahertz I'll change it later um, but just for this tutorial I just added that just to make it just to show you that there's two SSIDs being broadcasted from this device um, the radio band again you know I set on auto um, sonic wall most likely has optimized these settings. That's why there is an auto. So you like on this one, you can't even change it. Um, and probably this one, you can't even change it as well. Um, what you can change is the wireless security. So you could choose any one of these security types that you want. Um, WPA2 PSK works for me. Um, and then you can just type in the password that you want. I'm just gonna choose this as a, <coughs> for the tutorial, excuse me. Um, and then go ahead and accept the changes. Once that is accepted, if there are any changes, you'll see a notice down here that there are changes and they're received. Under the 5 gigahertz radio advanced mode, um, you can hide the uh, SSID beacon by checking this mark off. Um, data rates, again, you know, I want to be maximum as the best as possible. Transmit power, I want it to be full power. Um, identity, uh, antenna diversity, again, the best. And then you can do all these settings um, I'm leaving them as default right now um, gonna test them out as I'm using this access point and see how it goes and then change it as I need to um, next is the 2.4 gigahertz radio settings I enabled it named it sonic wall 2.4 gigahertz and same security access uh, <clears throat> credentials and the authentication type is down here and then the same thing for 2.4 radio advanced mode um, there are settings right here pretty much. I left them the way it is. Um, I, I rather keep it standard and then see how it goes from there. So, and that's pretty much it. So what we want to do is let's just say you've done all your wireless settings you wanted and you're ready to integrate this device into your network. Um, so what you want to do is go to another device, um, find out what your subnet mask is. So in my uh, network my subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 um, my gateway address is 10.0.1.1 I'm gonna go ahead and change that because um, that's gonna allow me to go out into the internet the IP address I'm gonna change to a random one that I know is not being used um, 0.1.20 and then I'm going to accept the changes um, so now what we're doing is we're setting the LAN settings for this device um, onto the device and once it's changed we should be able to um, access the device so then what you want to do is turn on your wireless access um, I would disconnect from the network uh, physically you know if you can and then within your wireless networks you're going to see the two that we've just we just made so I'm going to connect to the sonic wall 5 gigahertz uh, SSID and once it's connected bam it's connected so then what you can do is type in the IP address that we set to it and it should come up the management console should come up and which it has so right now my access point here is connected uh, perfectly through my current network I can even check it since the uh, wireless is connected um, and I can go to let's say MSN and I can so um, it's it's fully integrated now 
Um, the only thing you do need to remember is the IP address of the of the appliance in case you do need to do any maintenance or anything like that. So hope that helps. Um, thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please note them down below. Thanks.